Hey everyone! Maybe you have an interview that you are hustling to prepare for. Or maybe you just want to sharpen up your SQL skills for the eventual day where you get back out there and interview for other roles. Well, you are in the right place. In today's video, I'm going to share all of my foolproof tips that really will make you stand out and guarantee success in the SQL portion of any interview. Let's get straight into it. So for those of you that are new, I've been working as a data scientist in Sydney, Australia for the last several years. I've personally interviewed for many different roles and I've also conducted countless interviews for different open positions and I've noticed one thing in common. Most, if not every single data related interview will always have a SQL portion to it. As I've said so many times in my previous videos, SQL is so underrated and it is the one tool that you'll use on your day-to-day -day job in any data related role, even more frequently than R or Python. These days, data is everywhere and SQL is the most efficient way to query it in most businesses. So naturally, all employers are looking for candidates who are familiar and competent with using SQL. So what better way to impress your future employer than acing the SQL part of the interview? So of course, you can't just ace only the SQL portion of the interview, you've got to ace the entire data science interview. So I've actually got a video on the entire data science interview process and also some of my tips and tricks and I'm going to link that up in the cards above and also in the description box below. So feel free to check that out if you have an interview coming up. So for those of you that may be unfamiliar with the interview process, SQL is generally the first part of any technical interview. So in terms of how they assess you, this will vary depending on the company that you are interviewing for. So if the company is a bit more established, they might already have a framework that they normally use to assess candidates. Now this can be some kind of platform where you enter in your code and that will automatically run and tell you whether your output is correct or not. Some other companies which are less established might just have a fill in the blank kind of situation where you are expected to type in your code without being able to actually run it and check if it works. Um, you might also have a multiple choice approach where you are given different options of which piece of code will give you the desired output. And I've also done interviews where they've handed me a piece of paper and told me to write my code down on pen and paper. So either way, regardless of the structure of the interview, there is one thing that remains constant, and that is solving these problems via a very, very organized approach to guarantee success in any interview. Let's now go through my foolproof approach to any SQL interview question and go through a practice problem. Now pretend that you are given this data set called SAT scores, which contains teachers, students, and their respective SAT scores. Now you are asked to output every single teacher with the proportion of his or her students that got above 1400 in total. So the first step is to understand the question, and this is so important. Make sure you know exactly what you need to do and try to not let the nerves or time pressure get to you. If the interviewer is in the room, feel free to repeat the requirements out loud back to them just to confirm that the two of you are on the same page. Don't be afraid to do that as the interviewer is human too, they definitely want to help you and sometimes they might accidentally leave out any key details which are crucial to you understanding the problem. So only proceed once you know exactly what the question is asking for. So now once you have a grasp on what the question actually wants, it's time to explore the data set provided and make sure you understand what every single column refers to. So if we select star from SAT underscore scores, what do we see? We've got a column for school, teacher, student ID, we've got the writing, verbal and math scores, as well as the hours studied. Now this is pretty straightforward, but if you need clarification on what any variable in your data set means, then make sure you ask in this step before you dig in further and actually try to approach the question. There is nothing worse than misinterpreting one variable and having that ruin the rest of your interview. So next, you want to outline the approach to take. Now this is super important as you can get confirmation from the interviewer on if you are going down the right direction. This is where you can talk out loud and think, do I need to create any additional variables? What particular functions is SQL do I need to use? So always vocalize these so 
so that the interviewer has a chance to hear your thought process and also correct you if you are wrong. There are generally multiple ways to solve any given problem and what the interviewers are most looking forward to is your thought process and not so much the end goal. Now let's go through how we are going to approach this interview question together. So what do we actually need? Notice that the question is asking for every single teacher with a proportion of their students that were getting above 1400 in total in the SATs. Now, if you were observant, the first thing that you notice is that in the data set provided, there is no total SAT score column. Instead, you were given the three individual subjects and the scores the students have scored on each of them. So of course, you've got to actually calculate the total score of every student. Then you're likely going to have to do a group by the teacher of some sort and also calculate it as a percentage. Okay, so now that you've got some kind of basic approach, it's time to attempt our coding. So what I would recommend you doing and what I always do in any question or any work problem is I always start from the section that needs to be coded up first. I will code every single line separately and then run every line just to make sure the output is what I'm expecting, sort of sense checking along the way. And then I will continue to add in more logic and iterate this process until I'm at my final answer. So the first thing that I would do is create the total SAT score by summing up writing, verbal and math and check a few examples and test that this code is working as expected. So once you've done that check, it's time to now create our indicator flag to see if this number here is above 1400, which is the goal of your question, right? So let's do this in a case when statement. So case when this number here is greater than 1400, then we want it to output one. And if it's not, we want it to output zero. And now let's name this variable as flag greater than 1400. Again, check that this works by spot checking an example in the output where it's one, is the score greater than 1400? Yes. If the number is zero, is the score less than 1400? Everything's working as expected. Let's move on now. Next, it's time to integrate this with our group by statement. So we sum this up for every teacher and now we add in a group by. And suddenly we have the number of students who got above 1400 for every teacher. Again, we can spot check this just to make sure our output is performing as expected. And once we have this, we can move on to the last step of the problem. So to find out the percentage of students who are getting above 1400, you want to divide this through by the total number of students that every teacher has. So in this case, we are dividing through by count star, which represents the total number of records or the total number of students that every individual teacher has. So now let's double check our output again. Our first variable is teacher. The second variable is the number of students for every teacher that got above 1400. The next variable is the number of students that every teacher has. And the last variable is the previous one divided by the number of students, which therefore gives us a percentage of the number of students who are getting above 1400. This is exactly what the output is after. And we have completed our question. So to wrap things up, I'm going to go through a couple more of my tips and tricks, which I really think are the cherry on top in any SQL interview. So make sure you pay attention to your structure. This is so important. Keep your code format and upper casing versus lower casing consistent. You can also add in clear comments throughout your code, like so, to tell the interviewer exactly what your thought process is and sort of walk them through your journey with you. Not only will this make your code easier to read, but it'll also be much easier for any interviewer to review. Also, if your code is divided into logical parts, it really makes your job so much easier and it makes the interviewer know that you are thinking in a very clear and analytical mindset, which is probably what they are testing for in this interview. See, that wasn't so hard. Once you outline your approach and break it out into baby steps, everything is a lot less intimidating, right? Organize your approach into logical and concise steps, add in comments, do a few proof checks, and code that baby up. So hopefully this video helped you guys out in one way or another. Maybe you enjoyed the walkthrough of the SQL interview problem. Maybe it helped jog your memory of how SQL works. 
Um, these are some tips and tricks that I think really work well for me personally and have helped me be able to answer the SQL portion of any data science interview. Let me know down in the comments below what are the kind of videos you would like to see me make. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!